In this section, we're going to talk about the rectangular coordinate system. This is a way that we can uh, put on a graph uh, ordered pairs of numbers, uh, two numbers that have a relationship with each other. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to take two number lines and make them uh, perpendicular to each other, one representing one value and the other representing another. And so we'll call um, the horizontal axis the x-axis and the vertical axis the y-axis. And uh, where they intersect, we're going to call that the origin. So if we have an ordered pair, like 2, comma, 2, comma 1, that's um, suggesting that 2 and 1 have some sort of relationship. And uh, we will plot that in a way that... Um, that illustrates that relationship on this graph. And so the first number in the ordered pair uh, we're going to uh, designate as the x-coordinate. Uh, the second uh, uh, number we're going to designate as the y-coordinate. And this is the traditional way of doing it. The horizontal axis doesn't necessarily have to be the x-axis. It can be something else like time, and you can call it the t-axis. But uh, nevertheless, the first um, coordinate pair, the first coordinate in the pair is um, uh, the uh, horizontal is on the horizontal axis. The second pair is on the vertical axis. Now, once we have uh, this graph, we can refer to the different areas or zones in the graph by their core, their, by their quadrants. And so, um, each of the quadrants has a number, and we generally um, uh, put a Roman numeral um, to identify that quadrant. And so, you can see in the upper right-hand uh, corner you have the uh, first quadrant, quadrant 1, and then it goes around counterclockwise to quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. This is just a useful way to um, uh, refer to uh, a certain zone in the graph without you know, having to say, well, it's the upper or the lower right-hand corner or whatever, uh, something like that. Um, the quadrants' um, names will come in handy, especially when uh, we're dealing um, later on. Uh, perhaps you're going to um, deal with... Um, uh, trigonometry and calculus, and, and in those um, cases, um, the use of the quadrant names are, are, are pretty common. Now, let's say we have several coordinate pairs, and let's see how they, they graph. Um, so, if we have these uh, four pairs, let's say, um, and see how they all graph, the first one is uh, 2, comma 3. And so the 2 represents the x value, the 3 represents the y value. And so if we draw lines, uh, one at the x equals 2 and the other one at, at y equals 3, you can see where they intersect at 2 comma 3. And so that's the designated point for, that illustrates um, uh, the relationship between those two numbers. Now, in the second one, we have uh, negative 3 and 4, so we just uh, treat negative numbers the same way we would on a number line. Uh, it would be to the uh, left of the origin, and of course 4 is uh, still above the origin, and, and so we'd have that point plotted in the um, second quadrant in the upper uh, left-hand corner. Now when we have zeros, uh, they actually lie right along the axis. So in the first one where we have 0, comma 2, uh, that's right along the y-axis, because along that axis, x equals 0. And then we go up to y equals 2, and you can see where uh, 0, comma 2 is. And similarly, we can do the same for the x-axis. So if we have uh, x equals 4 and y equals 0, that's going to lie along the x-axis at, at the 4 mark. And, of course, y is um, 0, and so it's going to be there. Now, the origin, of course, has the coordinates of uh, 0, 0, and uh, that's uh, generally the center of our graph, and it doesn't necessarily have to be, but um, it, it's always considered the origin where we have 0, 0. Now, if we want to uh, plot uh, a relationship between, um, let's say, um, two points that are... That, uh, that their relationship is found in a, a, an equation, one of the ways that we can do that is that we can make up a table of values. So let's say we have the equation y equals x minus 1. What we would do is we would make um, uh, 
an x and y table, we would designate uh, values of x, and this would just be the convenient values that we would have, and, and then we would calculate the value of y. And so you can see, for instance, if x equals negative 1, you just take negative 1 minus 1 is going to be negative 2, and that's the corresponding y value. So um, one of the ways that we can represent those is by writing those all in coordinate pairs then. So you have the first one would be negative 3, uh, comma, negative 4, and so on, all the way down to uh, 3, comma, 2. And we can plot those points then directly on the um, uh, xy um, uh, rectangular graph system here. So we can go along and we can plot each of those points, and we can draw a line through them. Uh, the points were rather arbitrary. We didn't have to choose negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. We could have chosen um, uh, really any numbers in there. We could choose negative 2.5 and 2.5 and, and all that. So we would really have a continuous set of lines, and that's or a continuous set of points, and that's what justifies us um, uh, to be able to draw the line through it. So the... Um, Val the values of the graph aren't just the points that we um, choose, it's, it's all the values um, in between them as well. Now we have a couple formulas that we can uh, deal with and we can visualize. Uh, one of them is the, um, uh, the distance formula. Let's say if we were to have a graph and we would have two points, The first one would be uh, 2 comma 1, and the second one would be 6 comma 4. And we wanted to see how far apart those were. What's the distance between those two points? Now on a, lump, on a number line, we would just take the, the difference between the two values. But uh, since we have um, uh, essentially two pairs of values, then uh, there's some other computation that we have to make. And what we can do to um, arrive at that uh, value would be to... Um, a look at the Pythagorean theorem. So the way we would construct that is we would take um, this one point, the 6 comma 1, and we would look at how far um, horizontally we have to go and how far vertically we have to go. So uh, if we go along the line y equals 1, we'll reach uh, 6 comma 1, and if we look at the vertical line from uh, 6 comma 4, we look at we go down and then we'll we'll get to that point six comma one, so we can get to uh, uh, from two two comma one up to six comma four by uh, essentially going horizontally and then vertically. And notice that that's now a right angle, and that's what what this symbol means right here it means that we have a right angle. And so what we could do uh, to actually compute that distance would be to use the Pythagorean um, uh, formula, which was uh, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, where c squared is the hypotenuse and a squared and b squared, uh, a and b are the are the sides. And so we've found the length of those sides, it was 4 and 3, and so we would say, uh, put them in the formula uh, 3 squared plus 4 squared, and then take the square root of that, and you can see we get to... Um, the square root of 9 plus 16, which is the square root of 25, and so that distance then is 5, and we can label that as distance equals 5. Now, when you look at where we get these numbers, if you look at 4 minus 1, so the 4 comes from the, the y value of the, um, of the upper point, and then the 1 comes from not only the point that we constructed down by that right angle, we actually got that from the the y value of the um, uh, of the first point, which was one. And then similarly, we have that six minus two. Uh, the six comes from uh, the upper right hand uh, point, and then the um, two comes from the uh, lower left hand point, and uh, both of them are the the um, the x values there. So we can then construct a distance formula that is really based on the Pythagorean theorem of uh, taking the differences between the two y's and squaring it, and then take the differences between two x's and squaring that, and then taking the square root. So this is um, a, a formula that 
uh, probably looks more complicated than it really is. We're just looking at the horizontal and vertical distances and squaring them, adding them together, and then taking the square root. So this is something that uh, you really should commit to memory. And uh, you can memorize it as a formula, but it's probably better to try and remember uh, what it really means, that we're taking uh, the distance along the uh, horizontal direction, the distance along the uh, vertical direction, uh, squaring them, adding them together, and then taking the square root, just like you do in the Pythagorean theorem. Now the other formula that we, um, uh, that we want to look at is the midpoint formula. So let's say we have two points um, on our um, rectangular coordinate system, and we want to find the halfway point between the two. So let's say we have 2 comma 1 and 4 comma 5, and we want to find what's halfway between. Uh, here again, if we make this um, uh, sort of horizontal and vertical um, lines, uh, we get that one point of 4 comma 1 where the 4 comes from the same x value as the upper point, the 1 comes from the same y value as the, um, as the first point. And we notice that along that line we have, um, uh, we can figure out the halfway point between um, uh, 2 and 4. And so that would be uh, the, the average of the two. So it would be 4 plus 2 divided by 2, so the midway point would be at 3. And you can see on the graph there that the 3 corresponds to uh, halfway uh, between the 2 and the 4. So if we do the same thing on the y-axis, we can get the halfway point um, in y, and of course we're going from a y of 1 up to a y of 5, and so we take the average between those two, and that would be 5 plus 1 divided by 2 is 6 over 2, which is 3, coincidentally 3 actually. So if we look at what the midpoint is, it would be along those. It would be along the line uh, with the coordinates of three comma three. So uh, uh, this is uh, the way you would calculate a midpoint. And so, in terms of a formula, uh, we could calculate the midpoint by taking the averages of the x and taking the averages of the y, and putting that in a coordinate pair. So this is something else you should memorize and. Uh, uh, there again, I think it's a little easier to remembering uh, what it really means. It's the average of the x's and it's the average of the y's, uh, rather than remembering strictly what the what the equation is.